Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and today we're going to talk about lesions of the corpus callosum. These are commonly called butterfly lesions because of the way they spread from side to side. Here are our disclosures. So here we have on these two CT scans an example of a classic butterfly lesion. The non-contrast CT scan shows a fluffy, relatively homogeneous lesion of abnormally increased attenuation with some surrounding vasogenic edema. The same lesion demonstrates contrast enhancement. In the basic approach to the lesion location, we can identify that this is intraaxial and it is within the corpus callosum, spreading from one side to the other. This is the classic appearance for an infiltrating neoplastic process such as primary CNS lymphoma or glioblastoma multiforme, both of which are well known to be butterfly lesions. Let's think a little bit more about deep white matter and periventricular lesions. Gliomas, astrocytoma and oligoastrocytoma, and lymphoma, usually primary lymphoma in the central nervous system, are the classic lesions that expand by infiltrating the corpus callosum. Toxoplasmosis and CMV may involve the ependymal lining of the ventricle and the periventricular area, and various types of white matter disease or leukoencephalopathy, small vessel disease or arteriolar sclerosis, and infarcts that may be the result of hypertensive vascular disease may also involve the periventricular region and the corpus callosum. However, these lesions classically are associated with volume loss. Of course, these small vessels affected by hypertension may produce hemorrhage in a similar location. The classic butterfly lesions include the necrotic ring-enhancing lesion of a glioblastoma multiforme, the highest grade of diffuse astrocytoma, as well as the fluffy hyperattenuating lesion relatively homogeneous for primary CNS lymphoma. Both of these lesions are microscopically infiltrate and follow along the white matter tracts as they pass from side to side through the corpus callosum. Let's talk a little bit more about CNS lymphoma. CNS lymphoma represents 2 to 3 percent of all primary brain tumors. It is usually a non-Hodgkin's B-cell lymphoma. It is usually primary within the central nervous system without any extra CNS uh, locations. It's usually within the brain parenchyma in a paracentral deep location involving both the gray matter and the white matter and it may spread around the ventricles. In contrast, secondary CNS lymphoma is usually extraaxial involving the dura and or the leptomeninges. So primary brain lymphoma typically is this hyperattenuating lesion on the non-contrast CT scan because this is a classic small round blue cell tumor. Because the cells have a lot of DNA and they're very closely packed, they can attenuate the X-ray beam. Because they have decreased water, they may be dark on the T2-weighted MR. They can have restricted diffusion and be bright on DWI and dark on the apparent diffusion coefficient or ADC map images. The lesions lack a blood-brain barrier, so they almost show, always show abnormal enhancement in the corpus callosum. And again, the classic localization is in the periventricular area, and lymphoma is usually primary within the central nervous system. It's almost always a B-cell lymphoma. In fact, solid non-hematopoietic lymphomas are almost always B-cell lymphomas, and circulating or hematopoietic lymphomas are usually T-cell lymphomas. Here is a classic example of a primary CNS lymphoma on MR scanning. We have flare T2 and a T1 weighted image with gadolinium. The lesion is dark on the flare image. It shows contrast enhancement after gadolinium is given. And the lesion is also remarkably hypointense on the T2 weighted image. And again, this appearance of low signal is due to the cellular packing and the high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio of each one of the cells in this small round blue cell tumor. Here's another example of primary CNS lymphoma in an immunocompetent patient. We can see that the lesion on the T2 weighted image is remarkably darker than CSF in the ventricles and darker than the perilesional vasogenic edema. We can also see that the same areas show contrast enhancement once gadolinium is given on the T2-weighted images. So this was an immunocompetent patient who has solid enhancing lesions of primary CNS lymphoma.
In contrast to primary CNS lymphoma, which usually has a very homogeneous pattern, when we have primary CNS lymphoma in an immunosuppressed patient, we may have ring-enhancing lesions, which may be difficult to distinguish from toxoplasmosis, which also occurs in immune-suppressed patients. This particular patient was HIV positive and went on to have full-blown AIDS. Primary CNS lymphoma tends to involve the periventricular area. In this example, we can see abnormal hyperattenuation surrounding the right lateral ventricle and corresponding abnormal periventricular enhancement after iodinated contrast material is given. And so we want to remember this appearance of a lesion that is hugging or surrounding the ventricle. One of my colleagues calls this rimphoma because it forms a rim around the ventricular system. So CNS lymphoma is usually parenchymal, paracentral, hugging the ventricles. It's a small round blue cell tumor. It can be multifocal, and when it creates a ring-enhancing lesion, the rings may be irregular and have a wavy or undulating margin. We can also do special metabolic studies, including SPECT, thallium, and FDG studies, in order to be able to demonstrate the increased metabolism of this neoplastic process. In this coronal autopsy specimen, we can see that there is a lot of abnormal appearance in the periventricular tissue. We can magnify it here, and all of the periventricular tissue in this patient was infiltrated by primary CNS lymphoma and small round blue cells. From the same patient, we can look at this magnified H&E section of the frontal horn, and we can see how grossly bluish the region is. And we can also see after a reticulin stain that the tumor has a deposition of reticulin around individual cells, and that accounts for the older name for primary CNS lymphoma, which was reticulum cell sarcoma. So again, primary CNS lymphoma is densely cellular, primarily begins as a perivascular infiltration of small round blue cells with reticulin that surrounds individual cells. If we look here at this high power view, we can see surrounding the two blood vessels all of these small round blue cells. And in another field from a different patient, we can once again see a blood vessel surrounded by this sheet of small round blue cells in primary CNS lymphoma. So we want to remember that this is a small round blue cell tumor. Other periventricular lesions include cytomegalovirus, CMV, which typically gives you a very thin line of periventricular enhancement by producing an inflammation of the ependym itself, and ependymitis. In contrast, CNS lymphoma will give us a thick periventricular area of abnormality and enhancement, and oftentimes a very irregular rind around the ventricles. So these two processes, CMV, ependymitis, and lymphoma, are usually uh, distinguishable on imaging characteristics. Again, primary CNS lymphoma, abnormal hyperattenuation surrounding the ventricle. We can see on the image on the right hand side the classic butterfly appearance for a lesion involving the corpus callosum. So primary CNS lymphoma, periventricular hyperattenuating, a small round blue cell tumor. The last comment about CNS lymphoma is that it typically has a very early and very good response to therapy, a good response to radiation, a good response to steroids, and also chemotherapy. Because of this very early response, we want to remember that if the patient is going to need a tissue confirmation, a biopsy should be performed prior to giving therapy. Otherwise, there is a very high false negative rate for a biopsy in treated or partially treated primary CNS lymphoma. For this reason, it is sometimes called a ghost tumor. Unfortunately and sadly, the five-year survival for these patients is only approximately 20%. So primary CNS lymphoma, periventricular, corpus callosum, butterfly lesion, small round blue cells, increased attenuation on a non-contrast CT scan, low signal on a T2 weighted MR, low signal on the flare MR, bright on the diffusion weighted image, and this has been another MedPix video. Thank you for your kind attention.